to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Welcome to a well-designed business. On the show today, I'm joined by the husband and wife team behind Four Point Design Build in Los Angeles, California. Four Point Design Build is an award-winning, full-service, multidisciplinary, residential and commercial interior and architectural design project management, and construction firm, serving clients nationwide. With over 60 years of combined experience, Four Point is owned and led by interior designer and general contractor, Laura and Cliff Muller. Four Point's boutique hands-on style of design and project management, from concept to turnkey, specializes in highly customized client-centered projects with an experience and immaculate focus on whole home remodels, kitchens, baths, and office spaces. From high-rise and mixed-use design build to executive offices and luxury custom homes, Cliff and Laura guide and oversee every detail and project process with systems and teams in place that allow their clients to relax and enjoy the blessings of designing and building a custom luxury hashtag clean, fresh, modern space. Cliff and Laura's work has been featured in Architectural Digest, El Decor, Better Homes and Gardens, House Beautiful, Metropolis, Hospitality Design, and California Home and Design, to name a few. Laura is the former president of the Los Angeles chapter of the American Society of Interior Designers, and she has had the distinct honor of being selected to the prestigious 2018 DXV Design Panel, as well as the elite 2019 Designer Council for Monogram Appliances. Cliff has collaborated on award-winning and highly celebrated projects with such renowned architects as Patrick Taihe and Morphosis. In the show today, Laura and Cliff describe some of their work process and Laura shares valuable advice for gaining this information through mentors and collaborations with build professionals. Here's what I know. There's no shortcut. Hard work within your own firm and in collaboration with your contractors and trades is the only way to achieve success. Now, before I introduce you to Laura and Cliff, I wanted to remind you that I am bringing my one-day coaching event to Las Vegas this July 27th, 2019. This is the day before Las Vegas market opens. So the Power Talk Friday tour is coming to Las Vegas. If you are looking for a close-up, in-depth look at your business, the systems that you do or you don't have in place, if you need help understanding how to project your revenue or how to understand your profitability or helping clarifying exactly what service you can offer to your clients or how you can price them, then join me and my my Power Talk Friday experts in Las Vegas. You You can find all of the information at powertalkfriday.com. Okay, I hope to see you there. Space is limited, 15 designers, that's it. Okay, let me introduce you to Laura and Cliff. Hi, Laura. Hi, Cliff. Thanks so much for joining me on A Well Designed Business today. Good morning, Luann. Good morning, Luann. You guys, I... Yes, thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad that you two are here with me because this has been a long time coming. And I'm also excited to actually interview the two of you because I 
get a fair amount of requests from listeners to have the conversation about design build firms. And I, I have not had a lot of these conversations on the show. There has been a, a few of them, but it's by far the lesser majority than your typical straightforward design firm. So I'm looking forward to picking it apart. Um, I've explained in the introduction the career that each of you have had separately and now you are together for the last 10, 11 years working and you have joined forces and you have created this amazing business, Four Point Design Build. I mean, the, the accolades that your firm has received are numerous. The, the thing that I love, I want to tell you, is that for anyone listening that hasn't met the two of you in person, when you go to the, the website, fourpointdesignbuild.com, you're going to feel like you know Laura and Cliff. I love uh -huh. the pictures that you guys have on your website. I really do. Thank you. That means a lot. I mean, that 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 it has a sense of it, of invitation and welcoming. That that that's that means a lot to, to hear you say that. Thank it, you. It definitely does. Um, there are. We all look to have um, those. PR publicity shots. We all look to have the, the, the head shots and the different team shots that convey our personality to our potential clients. But yours, what, what, what I think, what I love about it is, is that they objectively convey something, but knowing you, they convey you. And that's what I really like. There's such a warmth and a connection between the two of you in real life when you meet you and speak with you in person. And it's coming through on those pictures. And it's just outstanding. What a great photographer and how wow. cool for the two of you to you. be so relaxed to really let us, those pictures let us behind the curtain in my mind. Well, thank you. Thank you. You know, um, I'm a little blown away to hear you say that. Thank you. That means a tremendous value to me to hear you say that because it is not always easy to, you know, find where that line is between professionalism and personal mm. expression and mm -hmm. how you want to um, express yourself authentically in this business world that we're in and it's so confusing right now with all the social media lines being blurred um it to hear you say that it's uh that it it's resonating is a, is tremendous thank you thank you're you. welcome and and the reason that i'm taking these few minutes to actually discuss it is because number one i do my point is to compliment the two of you but it is also a learning lesson because and i want our our colleagues to go and look at it and see for themselves because it is what it is is i often find that when you are working with your husband or wife that that should be in my mind a plus that should say to me as a consumer because it says to me as a consumer oh okay so they're all in and they are together in this and not that any single proprietary or any single designer is not all in but when i've worked with designers in counseling them and coaching them and so forth if they are working with their spouse i ask them to lean into it and i ask them to really express that to me because it is an extra layer in my mind of added value i feel like I know from personal experience how much Vin and I talk outside of window works about our business. And I know how many times one of us gets an idea or sees clarity or understands a better way to do something because we are talking about it on Friday night at 10 o'clock or seven o'clock or whatever. It's not just waiting until Monday morning to share it with a partner. And so I think that when you look at your website, and here comes the learning lesson, is that you do blend that professional and personal really well in the pictures. And it's a huge, huge message. So anybody that's a husband and wife team, you know, lesson number one right there, make sure that you kind of get whatever's authentic to you, you know, mm -hmm. what your relationship is, sure. and sort of see if you can send it to somebody who kind of knows you and says, does this look like me and my buddy here, my, <laughs> you know, or does it look yeah. like some other couple, right, Laura? Well, you bring up a great point about feedback. I think that um, uh, having trusted 
uh, accountability partners and friends that will tell us the candid truth that really do know us that can really provide that insight for us is is, is really important. I think that, that you make such a good point. I definitely send pictures to trusted colleagues that you think, is this really true? Are you Is it feeling too performed or does mm. it feel like it? And then the second the second aspect of that is then when they say no we love it it's so you are you ready to say to the world this is really me and not mm -hmm. that synthetic product mm -hmm. that you want the world to see you as like with the all the makeup on and you know that's a struggle to, right. to be able to say yeah we really do want to reveal that and I think it's come over time because one of the things our clients say um, right babe is that Every single time we finish a client, one of their favorite things during our t when at the end of a photo shoot day, we all open up a couple of bottles of champagne and we go around the room with the with all the vendors and the, everybody and we all celebrate with the homeowners and we kind of christen their their new space and the flowers are there and the champagne is chilled and the house is never going to look better than on <laughs> and we go around the table we say what's your favorite what was your favorite thing what's your high and your low you know and we laugh about it and we drink about it and the one thing that they always say is it's, i just love watching you two get along on the job site mm. and well i think I, I think one of the the nicest compliments we had recently was that one client after it was all said and done after two years having our champagne and enjoying the day uh, and the finalization of the project uh, the first thing he said was you know guys the nice thing that I really enjoy about both of you is that you were the same person then as you are now mm. so nothing changed you know through all of the stuff that happened Mm -hmm. through all of the trials and tribulations of building something, right? Uh, I think that's one of the nicest compliments you could get at right. the end of the project. Right. And well, because speaks, it speaks to our relationship and how we handle each other uh, when it comes to our clients. Exactly. I mean, because, you know, it's a, it's a funny thing. I When I am on a project and somebody has just completed a renovation, because as a window treatment person, I'm usually coming in when all of that is done. Sure. And if the project is particularly beautiful, I'll say, who was your designer and who was your contractor? And when they share it, then my next question is usually, would you work with that person again? And particularly for the contractor, the answer is, I would tell you six out of 10 times, no. You know, and there's and so for for and, and that's sad and that means that that man and woman whoever's running that firm despite the quality of work if it's good they're not running the firm well but f to your point cliff it's it's that essence of the person i hired is the person who was the same through the highs and the lows, the pressures, the, you know, the, the facade didn't drop on the nice guy, right? It is, right. we are nice people. We are, you know, thoughtful people and we care about this end project together. So yeah. that's a terrific compliment. And, you know, you said something in there that, that's interesting is, is that a every single project, Laura and Cliff, do you do where you, I understand I've had many people express that, they will have that that celebratory drink with the client uh, after the completion of the project. But you mentioned that you've got all your vendors in there doing that too. I mean, that's it, I mean, it, this that sounds like a pretty big undertaking. It does take a village. Uh, I could never stand up and take credit for a project at the end of the line and just say, "Hey, look at this pretty pictures." I'm a designer, and oh wow, because not any aspect of that project was done alone. And uh, our vendors are, are our team. And many times by the time we get to the end of the champagne and the photo shoot, uh, a lot of people have gone on to, you know, they're starting other jobs. So not everyone um, always makes it to the champagne flow, but I, I do put out an invitation and say, hey, listen, you're important. We value mm. you. You're an integral part of the success of this home and the clients would like to thank you. We'd like to have something that, a drink together that isn't um, on a timeline and they're invited. Uh, like I said, not everyone comes, but it is it is important to acknowledge the people that you work with and, mm. and the people that uh, our reps, for example, all of our plumbing reps and, and the people that we work with to get just the right spec sheets done and all that, those they come early on in the design process. But by the time we get to the end of it, they're, mm. they've pretty much been forgotten. But for mm -hmm. me, it, it's not that 
way. Right, I mean, right, for me, right. I like to have my reps come by and, and especially because we're friends and they're part of my team. If I'm going to invite my team, my staff, I'm going to invite my whole team and they right. are considered, they're not maybe in house, but they are team members and they deserve to celebrate their work. I love oh, it. So I sure. think it's a great yeah. idea. I, yeah. I think also too, the, the idea that this is a design build firm, it has other implications about how people are involved in the project. Mm. Uh, from True. Uh, the people that are working on on site, uh, the drywallers, the plumbers, they they know the owners. The owners know them, mm -hmm. and they usually have conversations with them. So it's not like they're strangers. They just right. things are done and say, "Oh wow, nice." They actually know the people. They talk to them. We negotiate contracts together. So uh, with this design build system, it's a lot easier to introduce everybody to the owner and get the owner to know them and watch them do their job, which mm. is really pleasant. Now, I, I think it's, I, and I can see everything that you're saying. Number one, it's so nice of you to share the celebration with all of the people that have created the um, finished product for the two of you and for the homeowner. And I also know, I mean, just as window treatment people, how, you know, Billy will can sometimes, if we have a whole house of window treatments, he can be there five, six, seven, eight days. It's sure. not the same as, you know, your, your contractors who are there for weeks and months. But even in that five or six, eight day period, he's making relationships with that homeowner right and I, I totally get it and I also, yeah and I also can see sometimes as a vendor you'll be like thanks no thanks not this time but other times you'd be like you know I really would like to go and see the way this came out and and especially for us as window treatment people we are often seeing we are always seeing as a matter of fact the house come together but somebody who did the rough in plumbing they may not see it and so it might be fun and nice for them to be part of that so awesome I yeah. love it now, I haven't heard of that before, so good for you guys. All right, let's get into this design build. All right, it is a different beast, design build. And tell me, you know, you have, okay, first of all, your company is called Four Point Design Build. I noticed on the website that you have a four-step process. I I'm going to jump out on a limb here is this where the four point comes from and and that sort of a thing and is are these four points critical like give me a little bit of background onto that one of you guys uh yeah i think that you know how we developed the the name four point came um it's kind of a multi-layer four just happened to be a really strong number for us uh it was we have four children together we have the you know uh, the compass um we are the center of a compass. And I, I think Cliff, babe, you said something um, to me the other yeah, day. The, yeah. The, the idea that we go in all directions when you do design build, you can't, cannot go anywhere, but all four directions. Mm -hmm. So uh, right. to cover all of the facts. That's right. So we really inject ourselves in, um, in, and which and hence out of that comes the four step <clears throat> process. And it's very, very specific and it's very clear. And uh, the compass um, is very important because we do steer the project. We shepherd the project from the very, very uh, beginning of concept all the way through our champagne toast. So being involved in all four corners of a project is very, very important. And it's very integrated. And that is our, um, what we provide, a very integrated service. And, but specifically, uh, the four step process is is very clear and it it really works and it's very defined um in our in the way we approach project sequencing okay so when i looked at the website the four step process is investigate discover analyze that's step one Two is design concept and development. Three is architectural plans, project documents, bidding and pre-construction prep. And four is the actual construction, design oversight, installation, the staging, the photographing, and the closeout. So the, right. the reality is, is that anybody that's had every single person that's listening that's had even a minute of experience in this business knows that these are the four arching overarching steps but each of these have their like probably a binder of steps underneath them correct yeah <laughs> definitely <laughs> exactly yeah so so 
think about guys if you were in a room with three interior designers that are in business under you know five years and they are saying my goal is to be a design build firm what is the first couple of things that come to mind that you are like here are to use your word, the pillars, the things that you need to be clear on. I understand because here's what I guess where I want to say to you is we can give somebody these four steps all day because they all just scribbled Mm -hmm. them down. I promise you. And they're stopping and rewinding and they're scribbling them down. Okay. But the thing is, there's something that comes before that. There comes before that the investigation, the self-analysis of am I cut out for design build? Should I just be designed? Should I just be Mm -hmm. built? What is that extra thing that we have to look inside and clarify for ourselves? What would you guys say that is? Well, I think uh, I'll I'll tell you, in my, in my point of view, um, if you have, uh, let's say three new designers that are just deciding to do something, uh, with a design build, uh, format, uh, it's hard to do if you're not experienced. Um, okay. No, that's not impossible. But the idea is you're starting a project from concept, the design, the plans, the if it's a renovation, the changes of the roof lines, the changes of how things are going to go together, the plumbing, the electrical, all of these things are important to come up with a concept as far as understanding the logistics of everything is how the house is going to be built. So it, I, I think the important part is the build part as well, because that's obviously what I'm involved with uh, more so than anything else. But uh, we also do the design in the beginning. And with the experience, we don't have to go out and hire engineers or architects because we have that all in-house and we design it here through that experience. So I, I think experience is very valuable. And if you decide to do something in a design build setting, I believe you need to have somebody experienced in the construction side to help facilitate your goal. Okay. So I would so, agree. Go ahead. go ahead. I think the first word that comes to my mind as far as if you're thinking about that is the liability. I think it's really important to open your eyes very wide and be very clear that when you are an interior designer, your liability is very different than the liability you have as as a contractor or a general or um, it just requires a different insurances uh, B it requires what Cliff said exactly babe it's totally hinges on your actual physical experience on a job site so you either have to have somebody that you're going to be partnering with like we have that's general contractor but it's imperative that they have real experience on the job site because there's so much liability this is health and safety these are codes these are uh, this is legal stuff that you're getting um getting involved in this is um, just not as straightforward as one might think so being prepared for this not impossible like cliff said but it is something you need to take into consideration i think it's the best way to do it i think the trend is swinging that way for more interior designers to be partnering with general contractors but you need to understand wide open that there is a flow and that there is piggybacking and there is a step aside these all these moments require finesse and uh, you can't just walk in and go I want to be a design build firm this is this is great um and then not understand the liability because it's it's well, huge it, if you take if you take your first step and that's to analyze the building uh you need experience right away you need to understand what you're looking at you need to understand what the issues are in the house you need to understand what the problems are if there's a problem about uh certain issues with electrical or HVAC you have to be able to see all of that in order to start your concept, in order to start putting something together, at least be able to tell the owner what you need to address before you actually do your work to okay. make the, the house house function properly. Okay. So what I'm hearing then is, tell me if I'm grabbing it, the first thing is, is that I'm probably 
oversimplifying. You don't just say, hey, I'm fresh out of architecture or design school, and why don't I start a design build firm? <laughs> like, that's probably like step B or C is what you're saying. And I'm yeah, hearing- that's a suicide mission. Right, right, right. So what I'm hearing is, is that you need a level of experience before you're going to add this construction level, this, this build level to your ladder of services. And so my question then becomes, I have two prong questions. So let's go down two different roads. The first is, if I don't have this experience, if it's my dream, it's my aspiration to one day be a design build firm, do you think then if I'm listening, is the advice go work for either a construction firm or a design build firm first? So I'm baby designer out the gate. This is my dream. It's not open one. Is it go work for one? Or if I have an architect degree, is that different than just than having a design degree? Well, tell me about that. So I'm okay. totally well, yeah, aspirational I, on yeah, it. I That's think, the first I question. I think the, what I was saying, uh, I was talking about experience. Mm -hmm. And in order to learn something, to, uh, to work with someone as an intern or to work into a certain uh, group of people that do design build, is always beneficial. Education is always the right way to go, but it doesn't give you the experience. And that's what's lacking because every job is different. And like mm -hmm. I'm sure you go, okay, you deal with windows, but every window is different. Mm -hmm. Every design is different. Every mm -hmm. connection is different. It depends on what you're connecting to. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different things that you need to understand. And I, I think always, well, I'll definitely say that the best thing about getting started is education, but also too, you need to get with somebody that could mentor you, mentor you or uh, you could follow to get some ideas. But if that's not available, you could always get together with a general contractor that's got that experience. Okay, and that Laura was what had, I was wondering. Laura had just mentioned that, that design build firms, if you're gonna build it, you need to really have that plan and understanding of who you're working with and you have to be in order to build it. So if you could hook up with a good general contractor that understands the process and will, is willing to help throughout the whole process, then that would probably be the best way to go. Okay, because that was my second thing was if you, you, you're you maybe a little more experienced, you're several years, you've sort of got your design process down, but this is an aspiration to have a design build. Is it smart to look to partner with a GC. So whether that partner is not a legal partnership, but just like, hey, I like you, you like me, we have a good working, come see, come sa. I respect your process, you respect mine. How about if together we try and be more intentional about landing projects that we're both on and developing the symmetry of a process of doing this together? That, that sounds like a good path to go? I do think that that sounds like the, I, I yeah. It, I, I, I think you nailed it on that one because I think that uh, if you do have somebody that you have found that you are that the communication is is key and that they're going to be respectful of the process and they're going to be it, it, it's going to work out for you and and there's two equal partners interested in the same result then I think that yes um, I think that's a great idea and I you know and that's kind of how it's been done for a long, long time where designers mm -hmm. will come into a project and, and um, the architects are on the project and the general contractor has been on the con uh, the project. And uh, uh, up until recently, we haven't really put design build into this new um, pocket of interior design build. Uh, and I think this is a trend. So I think that connecting with the general contractor that you do have some experience with and it's working is a great option i just think working with or or just ask if you're newbie get in with a design build and i'll tell you why working just with a general contractor who's got his own thing going on and you've got your own thing going on and you're going to partner is is still missing the integration of how design and construction work together through mm all steps of the project. Mm -hmm. So when you work in design build, and I got to tell you, Luann, I know you know this, the paperwork itself is, <laughs> is 
tremendous. I can imagine, the li- yeah. That's where liability, that's under the liability umbrella, you know, making sure that you're not just writing purchase orders for fabrics and, and framing. Now you're working, uh, you're coming in at the very beginning with a contractor and you're saying, I want to put a, a sectional here. I need a wall there. And I need, it would be great if it was a pony wall and it came over here, we wrapped, we could put a counter on the other side. That's construction. Mm. So that beautiful design of that sofa that's going to be integrated into that space you want to do right now you want Mm -hmm. to do right away Mm -hmm. and you have to know from your general contractor whether that's going to work right out of the gate that's the investigative part um and and you know it's it's so different when you're an integrated design build because the very you're just the paperwork alone it changes things so if you have the opportunity as a young designer to be able to sit in a design build firm that's clearly like ours, which is interior design build, not kitchen and bath remodel, not, you know, design build developer that does model homes where you're sitting, you know, in a part of a larger um, firm. Find a small boutique firm, a smaller firm that's very intimately involved in all aspects of running the project because being a shepherd of a design build project is very different than being a designer and looking to the general contractor to do his part because the designer and the builder have to do it together. Right. Okay. And so the thing about this is, is there's a few things in there, Laura, that you said. I, 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 first of all, just let's say that. Yes, go get actual experience working in the type of firm that you aspire to have. That's basically what Mm -hmm. we're saying, right? Number one. Mm -hmm. The second thing that you said in there is that you guys came to owning this firm together after each of you had 20 plus years in the industry of in your own like cliff being a contractor a general contractor and a consultant for contractors and you being um a luxury designer right laura i mean this isn't like hey our first business out of the gate right so the question is is you said in there when you know that you are a full design build firm in other words, you're not, I'm not a kitchen builder. I'm not a renovation one room person. You are from design build. So what happens? Do you think that it just really takes a body of work and levels of experience, whether for somebody that might take them five years and for somebody else that might take them 10 or 15 or 20 before you can say, yeah, I'm not going to just renovate your one bathroom for you. Or do you feel like, you know what it is in, when we talk about interior designers getting their business out of the, out of the gate, we will have, we've had many designers who say that they have in the beginning done projects for less than their full value for less than what their hourly rate is all because they evaluated hopefully this is the reason that they've evaluated the ROI on it and they said this is how I'm going to get my my business started I understand I'm making a trade-off of hours and money here for this project that I know will bring me other projects it's like a show house right you should (laughs) right a show house is a marketing investment okay but so it's an understudy for a little while yeah exactly right and so so the thing about that is is, is is the analogy here that same analogy, Lord? Do you feel like that there is a period if you aspire to be a design build firm that you will? Hey, yeah, you just want the kitchen done. Hey, yeah. Or is there a way to stand in your space and say, nope, I'm full soup to nuts. I mean, I don't know. Is it the, the answer to that? I'm curious. Yeah, it's funny because there's, um, I think, uh, the conversation that's happening in design build world is um, it is taking a new shape. So to answer your question about, can I just do a small space as a design with a design build concept and learn and get some chops that way? um, It's, it's not impossible. I just think that you have to be, you know, take a deep breath and say, I'm probably going to make some mistakes Mm -hmm. and probably there are going to be things that I didn't realize were going to be my responsibility. So I 
they they slip through the cracks and that happens but i think that jumping in is always a good idea jumping in with your eyes wide open jumping in with a here's another great idea have a mentor that does design build shepherd your first small project so i you know i would be happy to do that having a young designer say listen i'm going to take a small project i'm going to work with my general contractor and we're going to shepherd through this would you mentor my project um, digitally, would we do it? You know, can we do Skype calls? Can we figure out how to make sure that every step of the process that I'm not missing something, so that I can be prepared? Are there documents? Are there templates? Because there are. Um, so you got to be very careful what you just said. You just said that to thousands of designers. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> so okay. okay. So so the thing is, I hear you, and I know you have such a kind and loving heart, Laura. I know that about you. But we cannot have 50 designers call you up and say, "Hey, mentor me through my next project." Got okay. It. So give got us it. the parameter. <laughs> Cliff's like, Laura, be quiet. <laughs> no, well, you know but, what? but but but. Gotta- But here's what I want to say about it. There probably is a parameter in which you or someone else of your experience would be willing to do it. So let's clarify that because, you know, I appreciate the sentiment and I appreciate um, the heart that that wants to give that. But but is there has to be some parameters. It can't be just call me or call someone else. So what would that look like if you were to do that? Would there be a fee for that? Would it be like a, a cap on one question a week or one Skype a week? Because there are a lot of design that just went, whoa, there's a design build firm in my area and I would love it if they would mentor me a little. How do I approach them and what do I offer in exchange? Oh gosh, that's a great question. I have to ponder that. Because yeah, so I you do were just think, willing to give it away. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, that's my nature. And I know it why, is. You know, yeah. And Cliff is a, Cliff is yeah, a teacher by trade. I mean, but, uh, you know, it, it, so I hear you. Thanks for having my back. Um, <laughs> all right, so what I would, what I would say to that I would say that I'm I'm sure that there are businesses that would allow you to have some sort of an arrangement that you could work out specifically between you and that firm that may be willing to assist you in your first few projects whether you work it out with them that it's a weekly skype call or a monthly skype call or they just share some of their uh, basic templating with you or Mm -hmm. maybe a checklist some one of the design build firms may have a checklist or they may need some internship work so maybe there could be a trade at the Mm -hmm. beginning of your career it's important to get yourself connected with the the, as many people doing what you want to do someday that mm-hmm. you can. So um, I don't know exactly how that. No, nope, I, I like that. But it, it, it there's a, it's worth a shot. When I first got out of school, um, I I got a list of the top ten designers, and I didn't know who they were, and I just knew they were the top ten designers. I had asked around. I said, "Give me the biggest, the best." the gnarliest, I'm going to take them to lunch. Mm. And I went and I called every single one of them. And to my wonderful surprise, which I don't know why I was surprised, every single one of these designers said, of course I will help you. Wow. And of course I will have a cup of coffee with you. So I met them at their convenience, by their office. I said, I need you from 10 to 11 o'clock. I'm going to buy you breakfast and a scone and coffee. And I want to pick your brain because you are somebody I admire and respect and I need I just need to meet with you and every single one of them and I'm still friends with every single one of those designers today they have been integral in my confidence building they've had some wisdom for me when I was going through changing my insurances around and I said hey listen can you give me three or four references and can you look at my contract make sure I didn't miss anything and by then after taking them to coffee sending them thank you notes seeing them at ASID events going over and giving them hugs and saying hello and asking how they were by the end of the year I had relationships with 10 top key designers in my Mm. business that when I needed them at this point they were there to, re- at that point, it had shifted. It was now a recipro- they were reciprocating to me. Mm. And I love it. Those things are very important to take the time, you know, put your blinders on and don't hear the word can't. If right. it's, it's Kelly Wurstler you want to have coffee with, call Kelly Wurstler. Right. If it's 
a any one of those that you want to have a relationship with, do your research in your area, figure out how to make it happen. And the same with design build. If you want to work in a design build firm or you want to have a design build firm, like what Cliff said, you cannot do that without experience because you're going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I mean that quite candidly, and I don't right. mean that to assume that you don't know what you're doing, but even on the best days, experience speaks so loudly right. in the day-to-day -day job. Well, the risk is so much higher here. We're not moving furniture around and picking paint colors. That is scary and risk of its own when Absolutely. you're brand new. But this is this is like you to your point. This is it's not the same animal whatsoever. <laughs> it's not. it's, it's really not. compliance and, and it's yeah, rules and it's, it's laws and it's <laughs> everything else. Yes. Okay, They're like the paint police yeah, aren't first, coming to first, get you. Right. Right. The first thing we do is we go to building and safety and get all the parameters for this construction. Mm -hmm. Like what's the zoning requirements, what's the setbacks. And then we start designing our concept with those con with those details. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's, yeah, I, I yeah, actually will not. Con yeah, I won't design until Cliff finishes step one analysis. And that is so imperative that I don't waste time designing something that's not feasible. I need to know where my lights are going to go. So I need to know where the joists are going to be run. So in uh, which direction they are. So, you know, what's happening with demo? Uh, what, do, what do we really have? And then you have to, all that has to fill in, you have to know your budget. Mm -hmm. So you're dealing with budget, you're dealing with design. I want to know what kind of window treatments I have to tell my framers that I want to do this kind of window treatment. So I need to have a three and a half inch reveal if I want to do a seamless box. So if all of that stuff happens at the very beginning, and so I tell Cliff, I, said, I can't do anything until I know what the city is going to tell me, how, what the condition of the property is, how much money am I going to have left over at the end to get nice window treatments, right? And I need to have it on reserve so that I have it at the end because during construction, I that's my budget. I'm negotiating. You know, all of my fluffy things, my fun, beautiful things, are being negotiated with in construction because we're, we're using contingency money. So mm -hmm. all of this stuff that you're dealing with as an interior designer, it's so exciting, by the way, it's such a, it's such a wonderful place to stand at the end of a project and go, you know, this, I look at this beautiful picture and I'm looking at this kitchen and yeah, I didn't just design it or pick the paint colors. We mm -hmm. built it. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I was there when they laid the concrete, we had to trench the, the trench through concrete. We hit a sprinkler, you know, all these, you know, that didn't happen, but could have. Uh, uh, it may have happened. <laughs> it might have happened. <laughs> we might have had champagne yes. over it. We're you not know, sure. <laughs> happening. And you stand at the end, and you know, you, now you know why we have everybody at the job at the at the photo shoot for the <laughs> campaign because by then you really need to have a drink. But the idea is, is that it's so wonderful to look at a project in three dimension four dimension, mm -hmm. five dimension, mm -hmm. every sense is being stimulated because you go, wow, I really, we really built this. Right. Yeah. Here's 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 an here's an example here's an example yeah. of just this last week, uh, on the analysis of a project uh, that we recently got, um, the owner wanted to make all kinds of changes on the the actual footprint of the building, uh, and then when I went to the city, uh, the zoning had changed in March of 2018, uh, to say that it was required now if you took more than 45 percent of your walls down you had to meet the new requirement, which was a 10-foot side yard. Mm. Currently, they have five-foot side yards. So that's where the existing building is. Now, if we just went along and listened to the owner and made these changes, and then making our changes and plans and went to pull out a permit, we'd have to meet the new code. And then the owner would say, I just lost five foot on each side of my house. What happened? Uh -huh. That's important. Yeah, so or you the have new LED codes. Now all the cans have to, you know, the sprinkler codes in California and the cans have shifted now where we used to be able to put in a recess can for 225 bucks. Now it's 600 per can because mm. of the new laws that they shifted. So California is specific to that, you know, understanding the laws that are specific to California is very important as well. And it's not the same in other states, but for us it is. And understanding this, when they come to us with a budget and they have they want interior design, they, they are in interested in what it's going to look like. And we're telling them, hold on a second, you have to put 30 grand away for trash. You know, there's a lot of stuff that happens mm. that as, a, a, you know, at, right at that first step, which 
disseminates a lot of information. It diffuses and demystifies a lot of it. It puts the budget in a in a, in a mode of of uh, reality where, where as we move forward, there's no there, we try to limit the surprises. Right, <laughs> but right. But that that is going to dictate and inform how we design. Yeah, and also my, my last visit. Also, on my last visit, they had said if you move more than 50% of the roof, you have to put in fire sprinklers in the whole house. Oh. So if, you, if you're a designer and you design something, removing 75% of the roof for a redesign, and you didn't know that, that's going to be, you know, another four. Right. And the thing is, where it happens is, is it's either raising the budget for the client because they say, yes, 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 I still want to do it. Let's put this new sprinklers in. Or it's it's raising the budget because once you find out after the fact and they say, never mind, I'm not doing that. Now you're redesigning anyway. You're you're so one way or another, there's dollar bills going out the door there that you need to be understood of, be understanding of. So I have a question for you. Do you guys work out of um, California? Do you do projects for like you might have somebody who has a vacation home? home in you know montana or what do you stick, stick strictly in california no absolutely we'll go anywhere there's a great project if there's so a great how project does that montana, happen when you there. yeah so how does that happen as a design build firm is it a matter of cliff being the 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 one with the construction background of him now is there like you know building 101 and you go look up all the codes in each state and now you you know that you said that investigation and analysis that happens you have to start there from state to state you guys yeah sure but it's not it, it it's so there's a lot of parallels Luann so there's mm-hmm. a lot of even though I mean the concept is is pretty much cookie cutter it's basically filling in the specifics so at that point what we would do is we would schedule a, a an on-site um, extensive on-site maybe three days to f- a week on-site we would go to the city in that particular town we would look at the building construction we would do an analysis report we would take you know, we would have the testing, we would get a roster, a team roster of local people in the area that we can work with that come recommended, we would do our vetting process. All of this is step one, because that step one, the better step one gets front loaded, and the more details that we have to inform step two, three, and four, the better off we're going to be, and the and we don't have to be overseeing the project on a day-to-day. Okay. So, right similar to when we have done projects out of sight our drawings have to be immaculate Um, Mm. they have to speak the language so investing in understanding how your details are drawn your shop drawings making sure that your notes are accurate and they your your understanding that particular zone and code which you've already gathered is integrated into your drawings and then that's how we can communicate on the job site and then you know every week or every couple weeks we love to travel we would do a drop in and if that's what it takes to do that project and then of course we'd have to be there at the end of the project because that's when all the you know the crazy happens Mm -hmm. and we would we would uh, relocate um, ourselves during business hours and travel back and forth to make sure that everything was executed and installed properly that's it's a concept is this the same and it's just an airplane ride away mm-hmm, it's just mm-hmm. the same concept except for the fact that because we're not there on a day-to-day the drawings have to be immaculate so all right. the architectural has to speak the language of that city mm-hmm. um and and be almost perfect if okay perfect is if perfect can be had they have to be that perfect right really well, detailed yes i mean of course i'm sure you strive for that ideal on every project because it just makes the everything happier smoother whatever but the reality is i can hear you if you're off site and you have contractors on site and they're working for three four five days at a time they don't think they need your input because they think they're following the drawing and if they are following the drawing but it wasn't perfect <laughs> you know what are we exactly. going to do because you're not like walking on the site on the site every day saying i didn't mean that (laughs) so okay i have one other question for you go ahead sorry go ahead no go ahead i think also in your first in your first phase uh what's really important as well is hazardous material to make sure that you understand what building was was built and what type of materials could be in there as far as best as that to be tested Uh, a lot of people don't think about that that's okay. something you really need to be aware of. 
Right. So, yeah, yeah you're knee deep into these details, Cliff. That's where you are shining. You're like thinking of all of the crazy stuff that the rest of us don't think about. Yeah, but it takes up the budget. And yeah. you, as a designer, I have to think, uh, you get a client that comes in, okay, f hypothetically, I have $100,000, I'm going to do blank. Um, and you sit down and you go, as a designer, you go, oh my gosh, well, if you take my fees off the top, top I've got $90,000 to work with, or I've got $60,000 to work with. That's not true. Right. <laughs> well, wait, just so, before when you designer, said you have to allow $30,000 for trash, I mean, that's like, right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I think that understanding that um, at the beginning um, allows you to, during that step one phase when you're really negotiating contracts and budgets and all this, even before you get to step one, understanding that the budget, informing the client that, hey, we're we're gonna we're all in, we're hundred percent concept to turnkey, we will make sure that you get every single thing covered in this contract but let me tell you when they get that contract it's a scary number for them because mm -hmm. they're giving four point all their money and they're used to in the past potentially giving a general contractor a small portion of the money and then they give a designer then they give a designer a design budget well tell me how much the sofa is going to cost and what's your markup and okay we'll have the sofa but they're, it's hard for them to pull themselves, but the consumer to pull themselves back and say, okay, wait a minute, I'm going to give you all of this and right up front, and it's kind of an all eggs in one basket type of thing. Our job at that first, those first few negotiating meetings is to really educate them and tell them, okay, well, here's, we make diagrams, we have a PowerPoint that we bring the, before we sign any contracts, we have them come into our office, show good intention. We have an extended meeting. We take them through the difference between design build and the traditional methods and means of approaching a project and how it looks and what to expect and what to expect during each phase and so that their eyes are wide open going into a project because the fees can be very high perceivably. They're still going to pay it out even more so. We'll actually going to save them save about 30%, right. of course. Yeah. But they don't know that until we show them. We illustrate it for them so that they feel comfortable knowing that, okay, I'm getting everything in one. I'm saving over here. They're going to give me a realistic budget to work with so that when I go shopping for plumbing fixtures, I know I can only spend $600 on that kitchen faucet. Right. So that's our... That's what we provide them. So it's more than just designing and then having the general contractor building. You're negotiating and value engineering from the very first step one meeting. Right. All right. the way through. And with all, that, the with all of that, that saves time and money. Mm. It does. It does. In the long run, it's just you can't just expect the clients to understand that. Well, and I think that comes from, again, the experience that you have. It's you – you don't just know it because someone else has said to you, hey, it saves time and money when you work with a one-stop shop. You know it from having done it both ways. You know it from doing it together for many years. And so when you go to explain it and you express it to a potential client, you're really, there's a difference when you explain something to somebody when you know it when you absolutely know it through and through. There's not a but that they can put in your face that you can't come back and say, and this. I hear you, That's but, really you know what I mean, right? It's, it's so true. true. Yes, it, it's, it's yep. I know that experience. I know that in, in and it does come with, um, with, with having done it many times. And, and so that's part of what um, the designers that are aspiring to have a model like this need to just give over in patience and understand while you've done it once or twice or five times, each time you do it, you learn so much more and you become so much more convicted in, look, I get it, but I know this to be true. This is yes. how, right. Exactly. I have one question. Yes, I do. They do. I have one question for you that I just, again, like, it's so funny because I, I feel like I often skew a lot of the conversation back to the less experienced designer, but I do hope that I think there's always value no matter what level you're on, but it's that voice that I hear out there, the younger, not younger in years, but younger in experienced voice. And so sure. the voice I'm hearing now is saying, 
I'm on this journey. Okay, I'm going to do what you said. I'm going to get my experience. I'm going to, if I have the ability to partner, um, not necessarily money wise, but just in tandem with a respectable contractor, these are all things that I'm going to take to heart. But what happens in the beginning when you are pitching the whole process design build and the client is pushing you back saying okay it all looks really good but let's just chop off the 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 build part let's just chop that off and i don't want to take it to completion with specifying you know everything from moldings to sofas and all of that in lighting do you feel that there is a point that that's okay or do you feel if you've let's assume we've got some experience under our belt let's assume we've working with a good contractor let's assume we've had some conversations with mentors and we've actually have some projects under our belt let's make that assumption i'm not talking day one i'm talking maybe day three right um Mm -hmm. is there a point where you just say i'm sorry our firm does the whole thing A to Z. I appreciate that you want to just bite off this one part and then decide in two months or six months or whatever the trajectory would be to go with the next part. Or do you say, Lore and Cliff, you know what? Sometimes we have done the design, we have done the build, and then we had to understand that that person might not take it to the interior and the finishings and all of that stuff. What what, what do we do with that? It's a great question. Um, I think that at this point, we have come to a place of exactly what you just described, a point of essence and clarity about how we um, want to run our day to day. I think that we have in the past uh, done some piecemeal work like that, and generally it doesn't work for us, and it really does a disservice to the client. <clears throat> But like you said, when you're first starting out, sometimes you take projects that you know are going to be lesson worthy. And it's it's important to take sometimes those those projects on and you learn. So um, but for I think you do get to a point where you say, here's my best value to you. And it feels really awesome to be able to get to that point, because when it comes rolling out, and with conviction of your mouth, it feels like, okay, we really, I think we've really turned a corner here in our business model that enables us to say, this is what we know, this is what we can save you, this is what we'll provide you, we are the best in this area, and if you're looking for somebody else, we're happy to make a couple of recommendations, but this is what we do because we can't serve you the same way if we're not in control that we can when we have control soup to nuts. So I think it does, you get to a point of, I just think life development and maturity where you Mm -hmm. can actually say, you know, I think it's great. We're going to say, you know, no, I think we're done with that portion of our experience. Now we're going to let it be open to other designers starting out, but we right now are going to say, no, this is what's best for us. So that doesn't work. However, there are times where there are some incredible projects that will come up where it will be just so fascinating for Cliff to work in his niche space of construction where they have an architect that will already have the plans and they love to work with the, working with Cliff. So there won't be a lot of interior design work or that's that's needed or necessary, but it's as heavy on construction and management and uh, especially in the commercial area hmm. where if the project pencils out to be really worthwhile, then will kind of split off, then I will serve Cliff in a different way. My manner will then be to serve him as an administrative processor where I can come and help with sales and I can come and help with the administration accountabilities and I can help manage it on the on the in-house end. But there's not a lot of interior design that is required. It's okay. more construction. So that does happen and it, it really does take on, um, we really want to take on projects that are speak to us and that we know we're going to hit it out of the park and we know that it's going to be a joyful process for everybody. So mm-hmm. the end result 
is important to take into consideration when you split off. Mm -hmm. But there are those times where there's just a lucrative choice. Right. It's a, yeah, it's what a it is. Business, so you have to make right. some business decisions. Right, 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 right. right. What it is is it's there's a difference between making a choice to do a project that might not necessarily fit into your vision of your ideal project because there's a return there that you can identify as opposed to being bullied into not getting the full project because you weren't able to stand and say this is the way I'll do it there's and I think yeah. the yeah and I think the answer is is that to you said it in there it's it's not that out the gate or out that first five years every project is going to be from A to Z if you're design build, but you're always figuring out the reason why you might do lesser than the full A to Z if there's value in it. And eventually, because of time, experience, and everything else, you will just be able to say, you know, I always say to the, the designers I'm working with, know what you will do and what you won't do. And it's okay. If, if, if what you will do is a bathroom renovation when you really want the whole first floor, if you know that you will do that and you know how you'll charge for it and you know why you'll do it, it's okay. But if you know you won't, you've, you're now past that, you're not interested, it's the full first floor or don't call me, then you just say, in my experience, the best projects are when I do X, Y, and Z. And if you don't like it, here's the name of a friend who will do the bathroom for you, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And it okay. feels so good. I pray everybody listening that's <laughs> coming up because a lot of us that have been on the that have come through the come through full circle a few times know that feeling that yes. first time you stand up and you go mm, yeah no not mm -hmm. not not for me it feels like you want to go out and run a marathon it's <laughs> invigorating to know your self-worth and value mm -hmm. and the essence of the truth of your business mm -hmm. when that moment hits you it is addictive it's like mm -hmm. oh gosh i won't say no to somebody else now <laughs> I know. So, <laughs> and the truth well, you're so also, right it's also about it's also about dealing with people and their personalities and right seeing seeing what it is that you're talking to and uh, trying to understand the person uh sometimes you know with experience you kind of sit there and go oh yeah, right. okay. not my kind of people this, this may yeah. not work right <laughs> you know? right 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 and you have right. to listen yeah. to that voice because especially right. with design build you're going to be with them for many 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 months if not a couple of few years right well, so you know yeah. the, the the traditional type of construction is, is what everybody knows you hire an architect right he designs a building you hire a designer to you know, to make it look good, and you have a builder or a contractor to build it, and you hire an engineer, and you hire all of these people, uh, and that's a traditional way. When they see something like design build, where you're dealing with one entity, it's uh, you know, it's it's different. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's hard for people to understand because the way they've seen their dad do it, the way they've seen their friends do it, that's the way it's done, right? Mm -hmm. and not necessarily. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, even the Design Build Institute of America will tell you that you're going to save time and money using this type of process. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest mm -hmm. that people go to their website and take a look at what Design Build is. Okay, so Design Build Institute of America, is that what you just said? Yes, yeah. exactly. Oh. It's yes. a very, very informative, really great website. And it really helps break down um, some of the the aspects of then and now and the different ways that the means and methods and approaches that design build falls under the design build kind of umbrella. It's a, it's a, it's a fabulous website. It's a great Institute. Um, and you know, you can join it, uh, pretty reasonably at first. And, uh, it, it's a, it, I think it's a great to have in your pocket, AIA, ASID, NKBA, and the Design Build Institute of America. It's really, really good websites that provide a lot of information for yeah. not only the designers, but for the consumers to understand what to expect. Mm, mm. And we have a great presentation that we, uh, we did at uh, Las Vegas Market that was so, um, you know, kind of shockingly well received by you know here we we're thinking we're going to a furniture market but it's very telling Luann that you're right on the money with your you know with your interest here that the, it was a um, standing room only and at Las Vegas market which is kind of like a furniture 
day. Mm. Um, and there were architects and interior designers and contractors and installers and fabricators that were all there interested in design build. So what we wanted to do is try to break it down and demystify it and give some templating around how interior designers can work specifically in kind of integrating and getting, uh, you know, getting into the design build arena. So um, it was, it was fascinating to see how many people stayed after for almost two hours asking questions. There was a line out the door. It, there's a tremendous amount of interest in this a legislation happens to be being changed every day we get new legislation that is kind of changing the way interior designers can actually work and at the same time we have new institutions providing master's degrees of in and interior design degrees and they're coming out of college really prepared mm. uh, with no place to behave no place to get a business going and unless you you know, want to just stay in interior design and you understand and accept the limits that that is, you can't talk to a general contractor by law in most states. You have to be registered in most states. So things are changing. The landscape is changing. Design build is an incredible opportunity for interior designers to have massive control over a project, to enjoy the work, to at the end see this fruit that they've, that they've created that isn't one-dimensional and that's not to say that interior design is one-dimensional it's uh, the opposite but in a design build process it's a component right what was and the name of your topic Laura? what how did you call it uh, it is what is design it, build oh that was what it is design build what is then design and now build? and the changing landscape um, Love it. i can actually send you um i can send you some information on that um, okay and, and i can put uh, it in the show notes if you want That'd be great. I mean, we have a PowerPoint. Uh, it's actually being, uh, we have a CEU for it, and we're going to be shopping that out because it's really important for interior designers specifically to understand how to bill, how to bid, how to, what does it look like, how to approach it, is it viable, what are, the, what are some of the pitfalls, what are the pros and cons, and we kind of do this one-hour CEU that really gives designers at least what we're doing here which is to spark conversation and give some direction on how to take the next step. I love it. I love it. Are you guys yeah. doing that summer 2019 at Las Vegas? Is it scheduled yet or no? Uh, it's not scheduled yet, no. So you need me to hook you up and get it scheduled is what it sounds like. <laughs> we got to <laughs> have this again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they okay. it before and, and it was very popular. So I mean, definitely think it should be, we want to do more. I'm actually going to be talking, um, submitting it for West Edge because I think it would be really great, especially in California because um, it's a different landscape here specifically. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh my goodness, there's so much here. So I would just say, if you are going to any of the markets, always keep a lookout for Cliff and Laura Muller from Four Point Design Build because as you can see, I could keep asking them questions for probably another hour. But um, I just really have to say, I from the first time that we spoke and then every meeting since then, I really, truly adore you too. I love everything oh, about the way you do business, about the way you interact with each other, about the way you care about the community at large, about the way that you're willing to share your information. And it, what comes through is your integrity. And what comes through is your commitment to being the best that you can be. And I can just imagine what it would be like to work through a design build project with you. It must be an absolutely amazing experience. So my hat's off to you both, really. Oh, that's you like... make me cry. Thank you, Luann. <laughs> oh, that's, those are really kind words. My words, my, my heart is full. Thank mm -hmm. you. Well, we, they're we genuine. Try. <laughs> yep, it's genuinely the impression uh, that I have gotten over and over again with the two of you. So thank you so much for being on the show today and for sharing your expertise with us. Oh, uh, thanks welcome. for having us. Pleasure. It's been an yeah. honor. Thank you. Maybe you've had the pleasure of meeting Laura and Cliff at an industry event. And if you have, then you already knew before we even started talking how wonderful they are, didn't you? Smart, fun, and kind, right? In addition to being excellent business owners. In fact, 
I want to share something with you. I said to Laura, I emailed her and I said, um, you know, both of your bios are so extensive. Your accomplishments are so vast that I just can't, I, I can't read these whole things on air, right? But I said, but I don't want to be the one to decide what's important because there was so much, okay? Um, and you know what Laura sent me? She said, Luann, these are the values that Cliff and I share, and they are found deep in our core. Our passion for volunteerism and family, our mission for excellence in design build quality, our mission for excellence in customer experience, especially with regard to maximizing our, cl our client's budget and timeline, and our knowledge that our real life backgrounds in theater and vocational education are key and add so much dimension and meaning to our work in relationships, right? I mean, after hearing Laura and Cliff talk to each other and to us, are you at all surprised by Laura's words? Yeah, not me, not me either. <laughs> this is a rare couple, guys. And if you ever do um, find yourself at an industry event and you see their names on the ticket, please go see them speak in real life and go introduce yourself to them. You won't be disappointed, all right? Now, for me, outside looking in at each of you and your businesses, I have to say running a full-service luxury design project is awe-inspiring enough, but adding this layer of the full build is a whole other level of, com of complexity that frankly makes my head spin. And what I know is the level of detail, the finite processes, and the adherence to strict systems must be a non-negotiable. I hope in listening to Cliff and Laura, you can see that while it is a difficult, complex career, it is something you can do if you do it with intention and a commitment to that detail and to excellence. All right. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I wonder what your takeaway from it is. I wonder if you've got a little line in your notebook there of something that you are going to do today to make your interior design or your design build firm better or more profitable. Alrighty. If you have gotten some kind of aha moment from this episode, I wish you'd share it with me on the social media post for this episode, whether it be on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Okay. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks tons and tons for joining me today and decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one -on -one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.